going to go over the process of installing the iSCSI target server role, creating shared virtual disks, creating the iSCSI targets, as well as using the iSCSI initiator to mount the disks on the remote server. To start on the server that you want to host the disks, you need to install the role. To do that, you go to manage, add roles and features, role-based or feature-based installation, select the server, under File and Storage Services, and then under File and iSCSI Services, you want to enable the iSCSI Target Server role. Include Management Tools, and then Add Features. Then hit Next, Next, and then Install. Once the installation has succeeded, you can just press Close. Go to File and Storage Services, then iSCSI. In here, this is where you can create the shared virtual disks and the target servers. To start, click to create an iSCSI virtual disk. Just click the wizard. In the wizard, you can select the server and then select the drive that you want to store the virtual disks on. By default, it will store it under iSCSI virtual disk on the drive that you selected, or you can choose a custom path. All you need to do is give your drive a name. description. I'm just going to call it iSCSI fixed disk and then give it a size. So I'm just going to give this five gigabytes. For this example, we're going to use a fixed size disk. Uh, this will provision the entire five gigabytes on creation of the disk. And then we'll just select to clear the virtual disk on allocation, which will just write a load of zeros to the drive. So if there's any underlying data, it will clear that out. Now we need to create a new iSCSI target give this a target name, we'll just call it iSCSI target and then the server that's going to use the disk. Now we need to add the server that's going to be using the disk, so just press add. And then there's a couple of ways to do it, you can either search Active Directory or you can manually specify the iSCSI qualified name, DNS name, IP address or MAC address. I find the easiest way is just press browse type in the server name, check names, and then OK. This will populate here, and then when you press OK, it will automatically populate the value in the access server list. Then press Next. If you want, you can enable CHAP, which is the Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol, which is used to authenticate when a drive connection is uh, attempted. Uh, for this example, we're just going to leave this blank and then create. All those are completed, so I'll just press close. What we'll do is I'll just create a second disk. Same again by just pressing the C drive, and then next. And then I'll call this iSCSI Dynamic Disk 1. We will give this one 10 gigabytes in size, but with this one, we will select the dynamically expanding disk. This basically just provisions a very small disk, which has a limit of 10 gigabytes or whatever you set it to. Uh, and then as data is written to the disk, it then increases the disk size. We're going to select the existing target that we just created before and then create. Now both of those are shown as created and not connected. Now if we go to File Explorer, we can go to the iSCSI virtual disks drive and then we can see both of the disks that we've created. You can see that the fixed disk has got the five gigabytes fully provisioned. However, the dynamic disk is only shown four megabytes in use, even though the capacity is set to 10 gigabytes. Next, uh, we're going to go onto the server that is gonna consume those disks, which is DC01. To add the disks, you don't need to install any features. You can just go to Tools, and then the iSCSI Initiator. This will ask you to start the service, and then it will also set it to automatically start the service every time the computer restarts. The quickest way is just use the Quick Connect feature. So all you need to do is type in the IP address of the server that is hosting the virtual disks, and then press Quick Connect. 
and then it will automatically pick up that target that we've just created and you'll see it says login succeeded. If for whatever reason it says login failed or authentication failed, what you'll likely have to do is restart the server that's consuming the disk and then it should work fine. Sometimes what you might need to do is this might say disconnected, so you just need to click it and then press connect. Uh, but that's all we need to do for the time being in the initiator properties. Next, to uh, actually use the disks, if you go to File Explorer, you'll see that there's no disks here. That's because they aren't initialized yet. So you can either right click the start menu and go to disk management or open the run uh, command box and type in disk management. Now you can see both of the drives that we created. You've got the five gigabyte fixed disk and the 10 gigabyte dynamic disk. So to connect them, you just right click the disk and then press online and then initialize and then set it as GPT or MBR if that's what you're using. You can then create a new volume. We'll just call this uh, fixed disk one and then finish. And then we'll do the same again for disk two, online and then initialize and then create the volume. Now both of the volumes have been created. If we go back to File Explorer, we can see that the fixed disk one and dynamic disk that we created are now appearing and they're showing their full size. So we can create folders and create files just as you normally would on a local storage device. Now another thing you might have to do is you might have to increase the storage size over time if it uh, becomes full. So to do that you can just go back to the server that's hosting the disks, right click and then press extend. So what you do is you type in the new size, you don't type in how much you want. So if we typed in say if we wanted an extra 2 gig it would say uh, it must be larger. So we'll take this one to 8 gig and then we will extend this one to 15 gig. I notice they're now shown as connected and with the new size. So if we go back to the server that's consuming them, you'll notice that the size hasn't updated, but it has in the disk manager. So what you can do is if you wanted, you could either create a new volume. And you can just call this fixed disk two. Or if you wanted to extend the volume that you've already got, you can just extend it like you normally would if you're adding or increasing the drive of any other disk. And if we go back, we can see obviously that additional 3 gig fixed disk, as well as the increased storage on the dynamic disk. Now that's the basics for getting iSCSI services set up.